ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. It is 7.33 p.m. It is Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd first like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Ben Kitholi. Here. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli. Here. Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Good to have you all with us. Uh, here on behalf of the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. And I do not believe we have anyone from legal with us tonight, either um, Michael Cunningham or uh, Jacqueline Munson. We are in the middle of town meeting in Arlington and their schedules are extremely busy this time of year. Okay, um, and then appearing for docket 3787 84 Hillside Road, uh, Mai Cheng or Alan Cheng, are you here? Thought I saw their name earlier. Is there anyone here in on behalf of 84 Hillside Road? Yes. yes, 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 yes. Okay. On behalf of what? Hillside Road. Um, um uh appearing for docket 3790-3840 Milton Street. Someone here in support of that? Present, yeah. Great, thank you. Absolutely. Okay, appearing for docket 3792 529 Summer Street, uh, Jeremy Kleiman and Laura Rubenstein. Here. Great, thank you. And appearing for docket 3793, 30 Mayflower Road, uh, Shannon Smith uh, and Brian Poisson. Uh, good evening, Brian's here. What are you doing? Great. Right. Have you here? Um, I just ask that people who are on the call, if you are not speaking, if you could please leave your phone on mute. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Good. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects. Signed into law on March 29, 2023, this act includes an extension until March 31, 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. 
We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. So the first item on our agenda, number uh, is item two, is the election of officers. Uh, as this is an administrative item, I'm going to go ahead and move that to the end of the agenda so we can move forward with the public hearings. Uh, so that brings us to uh, docket 3783, um, excuse me, 3787. Um, be before opening the public hearing, I'd like to offer some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce the agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves and make a presentation to the board. I will then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. Any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting. All votes will be conducted by roll call vote. Under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and recorded at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, uh, item three on our agenda this evening is docket 3787, 84 Hillside Avenue. So if I could ask the um, proponents to please introduce themselves to the board and uh, tell us what they are looking to do. Hi, um, my name is May and my husband is Alan. Uh, we, we moved back to my hometown, Arlington, since last year, and then I, I learned my English and graduated in Arlington High School 30 years, years ago. Uh, I just, this is our little bit about us. Okay. Then we, we moved back <laughs> and then we, I love my town. Um, and then um, first, uh, uh, we would like to talk about, uh, describe a little, a little bit about the traffic from the uh, foreign street, which is our backyard parking. It is a very busy street. Um, uh, a lot of children uh, walk by every day to school, to the Dallin Elementary School, um, uh, uh, because the school is only uh, three blocks from us, our house. So Super. they um, they walk by our best, uh, uh, the backyard every day. So, um, so we feel like... Um, they are very little. They barely see my husband, uh, Alan's truck when they walk by. So, uh, we are li like a little bit like like difficult time to come out and come back and make a traffic a lot. Um, second is like it will be more safety like that. Uh, uh. Um, uh, for my for my uh two uh seventy eight years old and seventy six years old parents, um they to come they access to the front door, uh for uh better than for the back door, uh traffic, um it would be more safety for them they are uh, because they are very like old person and then like the um the third reasons that we want the second driveway to the front door is. The um the hill size have two stops, so stop uh, stop size. So when we come out uh from stock uh like the traffic from the hill side will be slowed down, so it will be more safe and like uh like vision sign and like when we come out to the front door instead of the back door from the uh foreign street, which is um a lot of children like they are. They are passing by every day. Yeah. So we hope like uh we, we believe this is no impact to our neighbors. Uh, uh beside I think it, it would be helpful for safety purpose for the children, elderly, and then um for the uh patreon to walk every day, like safety for for that. So we ho we hope that we can get the approval for the second drive to the hillside front door uh, 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 for, for that. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And, uh, you. Welcome back to town. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share the site plan um, that was provided. Uh, 
Um, so as, you, as was described by um, Ms. Chang, the Florence Avenue is here um, on one side of their property and Florence Avenue uh, is Park Avenue is at this end and Down School is at the other end. Yes. Um, and then Hillside Avenue here is the side street and the existing house has an existing garage and there's a paved driveway that exits out onto Florence Avenue. Um, is there a sidewalk along Florence Avenue? I don't think there is. Sidewalk, so yeah. Yes, uh, it's in um, uh, existing coop. In, uh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Inside, yes, yes. Oh, there is, is a sidewalk. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. They, they always walk in from here to the school. To the school. Yes, yes. Oh, it's okay. Only three blocks from them. So because this is the uh, very... It's a school street three three blocks. It's the school for the for the children. Yeah, uh, for the elementary school. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. And then also it's the busy street because it has um <laughs> private light at the end. So a lot of like car they would like to come out from here to the uh park, park, park avenue. Park. It's easier to access. Yeah. So. Okay. For us, yes, yeah. So we can tell the busy. This is very busy, busy street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the um the paved driveway that's shown here. So the driveway has been has been laid already. It's there. Yeah. Um, and you're coming to the board, um, looking for permission for having a second driveway, um, <laughs> which is uh, in our bylaws is the section uh six one ten a. And there are a couple, so the, the board is allowed to approve a second driveway uh, by special permit, but there are a few restrictions to that. Um, one of those is that the, uh, the second driveway cannot um, uh, violate any other provision of the zoning bylaw. And one of the provisions, the zoning bylaws, is that a parking space cannot be created in the front yard. So the the difficulty we have with the location for where the driveway has been laid and where it sits now is that it is within the front yard uh, for Hillside Avenue, and it would not qualify for being a second driveway. Um, and we had I had discussed this case uh, with the. The building inspector last week and we were you know understanding your concerns and understanding um you know that the board is allowed to authorize a second driveway we were trying to think if there was um any circumstances where this could be done in a manner that would be compliant with the zoning bylaw um and the the what well, we were uncertain, so the, the front yard setback is 25 feet in this district, and we were unsure how far your house is from the existing, from the lot line on Florence Avenue. Um, but once you are farther than 25 feet, uh, it, it is no longer the front yard. So if you had a driveway that was narrower and tighter to your house, it's possible that would comply okay. with the bylaw. Um, but the way it's drawn now and the way it's been, um, okay. find. so this is, um, do you see the photographs now of the, of the yard? So this sort of shows where the, the driveway has been installed now. Um, so sort of between this, the tree and the house, it's in this area now. Um, so the, um, turn to other members of the board, if they had other thoughts about, um, this application, we're being asked to approve a second driveway, but unfortunately the way it's drawn right now, it doesn't meet the requirements for a second driveway. And, um, we would need to come up with some kind of alter. The, the applicant would need to come up with some kind of alternate design that would actually comply um, with the bylaw. Um, are there 
Questions or comments from members of the board? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Mr. LeBlanc. Um, I had kind of some of the same questions that you did about the driveway initially. Um, one other thing that I'm thinking of is um, the placement of the driveway is also pretty close to the corner of the street. And I know it, there's a stop sign at the at the end of, um, was it Hillside Avenue? Um, but it still is pretty close to the driveway. So like we picture a car kind of pulling in and out um, that it is pretty close to that intersection. Um, so I think it just might per present more of an opportunity for something to happen um, rather than with the current location. Um, the other thing that I had in mind was, um, you know, does it need to be two cars wide? And I, I believe it's also maybe wider than what is allowed. I uh, don't remember the, the dimension off the top of my head there. Um, but I thought it was 20 feet for driveway width. Is that correct? Or? No, there's a, there's one requirement for 20 and there's one requirement for 24. Yeah. I'll we'll quickly look that up. Well, I'm doing uh, so. Are there other questions from the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? Uh, I didn't actually do that, but I do have a question. What is, what? Are, how are you using the existing driveway on Florence? I mean, the question that we have here before us is whether or not two driveways can be put in. And it wasn't clear to me whether you're whether this is needed as an extra driveway or it's whether it could be an alternative uh, to the driveway that that you already have. I, I understand that there's a garage there and you probably if you're using it for automotive purposes, as some people do, uh, that that might be a difficulty. But uh, I wonder if you could just explain the situation. Why could we if you had to, why couldn't you? trade the driveway you have for the driveway that you're asking for. So I've asked the applicant if they could respond to that question. Oh. The, 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 the garage is too small, the car cannot trade. Oh, also, the garage too small, we cannot... Uh, the car is too big. Too, too big. The truck's too big, we cannot get in. And then, um, and then also, that and when we have the tendon, um, is if is we don't have the space for the uh the downstairs tendon to uh, like to, if for the rental purpose, then we cannot let because it's not strict parking. I don't think they have a overnight strict parking. So and then we have difficulty to rent it out if 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 for the rental purpose for the for the, uh, in the future, then we don't have the extra parking space for them. To... What would be the problem? <clears throat> what would be your problem if the answer is just to remove that, use the garage for storage or whatever, to remove the parking, the parking, the the driveway that is located off Florence now, and to use only the driveway that you would like to have on Hillside. That way, you'd only need need one driveway. And you wouldn't have all the same, you'd have some problems still, but you wouldn't have all the same problems you have with trying to have two. You, you mean to, to remove the... Uh... Remove the existing driveway, the one that was pre-existing, and use the one that you built or something similar to it uh, uh, instead. So you only have one. So you you mean remove? So can I just like build a fence then? then well, you could. You, the people there, would go. Just, I would, I probably you would want probably you would want to have somebody come in and take up the asphalt. But my question, I don't really. I'm not sort of into how exactly you would do it. But just as you can build a new driveway, you can take up a driveway you already have. Uh, and I'm just trying to explore why you need two driveways as opposed to why you need one driveway, but in a different place. Because the, the parking only have two parking space. We don't have enough parking space. Yeah. Uh, 
the parking space only that side on the foreign street only have two, two, two parking space two parking space outside so and then the uh the the parking existing garage inside is too 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 small i'm so sorry our truck is big so we don't able to get in to the to the yeah. so we garage so we were missing the parking space too if the uh, if the new tenants coming in, we don't have any space for them either. So it's kind of difficult for for us to rent out to for the situation mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So so if we have the also have the uh foreign street, so the truck can move to the uh hillside street, then we have a spot, at least one spot for the tenant. Mm -hmm that too yeah if if i since um my husband has uh no job right now so mm -hmm. if we want to if we need to rent out the uh um the property. the property then we can able to offer the the, the tenant for the for the second drive for the for the foreign street park then the truck mm -hmm. can move to the the big truck can move to the his truck can move to the um hill uh hill sides. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dupont. Um, so I so you would the the applicant would still intend to use the Florence Street driveway for parking. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, for my car. Yes, yes. Okay, my car. and how many how many cars or how many park how many vehicles would you park on Florence Street? Uh when now only we have two. We, we have two. My husband truck and myself. Okay. Yes, and, yes. And so and but so if you're... we have new if we have a new tenant, if we financial that problem, then if we want to win it out, then we want the we want the extra one to offer the uh tenants. Thank I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. so Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry mm -hmm. I didn't mean to interrupt, Ms. Ms. Cheng. Um, but I have a question, Mr. Chairman. So, when you said that you were talking to the building uh, department, uh, to Mr. Champa, were you suggesting that um, that the uh, because the the depth of the yard from Florence Street to the building that you could actually treat hillside as the front yard and then you could run a driveway in accordance with the the dimensional requirements up to the side of the house and then you'd be able to satisfy the requirements about parking in the front yard because you'd have parking by the side of the house i'm, I'm i'd like a clarification on that so i know oh, absolutely what be able to consider so what what we were looking at so the way the house is arranged in the site now because it has two front yards yep uh one facing hillside one's facing florence um the one facing hillside um is only 18.7 feet deep and beyond that it's considered the inside the lot yep um and off florence it would there's it was unclear to me uh, i don't know if the, i don't think the garage necessarily sets where the edge of the front yard setback is i think it's still a 25 foot setback off the front yard um, and the garage is existing non-conforming in the front yard. Um, but if the distance from the house to that lot line is, say, 35 feet, then the first 25 feet from Florence, you would not be allowed to build in because it's considered a front yard. But you could create a parking space adjacent to the house in that remaining area. Coming, and if in, they were from, coming in from hills, hillside. Coming in from hillside. So if there's a space there that is big enough, you know, that is eight by 18, I believe is the, the requirement for mass for um, Arlington. Mm -hmm. So if there was an eight by 18 space immediately adjacent to the house. That was more than 25 feet from the lot line to Florence Avenue. That would be a legal parking space. And then they could do a driveway from there out to Hillside Avenue because it would be a driveway connecting to a legal parking space. Even maintaining the parking spaces that exist now on Florence. 
Even maintaining it, correct. We would need to we would need to grant a special permit for that. For the second driveway, um, I get that. For the second driveway, and there are specific uh, findings the board needs to make in support of that. Yep. Can I just, this is uh, sort of an editorial comment, and we've made this before recently with regard to, um, you know, a shed that was being built where you have, uh, you know, you have citizens, property owners in good faith go to a contractor and say, can I do this? And they say, yes. And then the next question is, do I need a building permit? And the contractor says, no. And, but we all know that there's another step beyond that. And the, the homeowners often would not know that, but I would think any contractor of any, you know, repute uh, would have to know that there is more to it than meets the eye. And I'm a little bit distressed, quite honestly, about the fact that you have a paving contractor comes in, makes a curb cut, paves an area, and tells really unsuspecting owners that, you know, there's no problem here. And, you know, unless somebody just started in business yesterday, they have to know better than that. And I'm I'm a little frustrated with this because if it gets down to where we deny something like this, you have a homeowner who's going to have to tear this up at an expense and what's their recourse to go to court and to say this person you know was negligent in allowing me to build here and and I just I don't know how we can respond to this but I almost would like to get the names of contractors who do this and put it on a watch list for the town so that we know that there are people who just basically turn a blind eye and we'll go ahead and make money off of unsuspecting homeowners. So, you know, I'm distressed about this. I have the same concerns Mr. LeBlanc has about the closeness to the uh, to the intersection. But on the other hand, Florence Street is a much busier street than Hills Hillside, as the applicant has stated. And I do think that there's probably a benefit in terms of safety if you're using the Hillside driveway. I mean, if you're using both of them, maybe that you know, reduces the benefit, but at least I think it's, you know, some benefit if you're not coming out onto uh, Florence, because as as Mrs. Cheng observed, um, you know, people use Florence because there's a traffic light. I did that today when I went to look at the property. So people typically try to circumvent and not have to worry about making turns until they get to the traffic light. So I get that. So Anyway, I just would like to have a clarification, and I think you provided it, Mr. Chairman, about what they might be able to do, um, you know, to put a driveway off of Hillside. Mr. Chairman? You, Mr. Yes, Mr. Hanlon? Yeah, I wondered if you could just, for those of us who are thinking visually now, if you could put the uh, plan back up. And just show where it is that you envision that this this might take place. Certainly. Um, so as we said before, here's the existing garage and driveway that leads out onto Florence. This is approximately where the uh, the new area of paving has been placed. So the currently, and the, the way that um, the site is laid off off hillside, so the house is eighteen point seven feet back. So Imagine a line here. Um, this is the end of the front yard uh, for Hillside. Now for Florence, the hills, the front yard is 25 feet in from this line. So I don't have a good dimension. This is 75 feet is the length of this. So it's approximately a third of this leg. Um, so say here. So this portion of the yard on going to Florence would be considered front yard. So as long as the parking and not the driveway, but just the parking space is within the area that is more than 25 feet from Florence Avenue and more than 18.7 feet from Hillside Avenue, that area is can be considered for a parking. Um, and so that would be approximately in this area here. 
and then they could from that there could be a driveway leading out onto hillside leading avenue to the parking space yeah that right because the requirement for a parking for a driveway is a driveway has to lead to parking right and it has to lead to legal parking um which unfortunately this does not because we can't oh the bylaw doesn't allow the creation of parking spaces in the front yard which this does so the key thing is you need to extend the driveway and maybe move it over, but extend the driveway so that you've got a parking space that is located sort of in the, that is located outside the, it's not in the side yard, but it's lo, it's legal because it's located outside the setback from Florence. Correct. And the question is whether or not there's room to do that. Correct. And to determine that, I think the homeowner would need to work with, um, with the surveyor to look, to identify where the setback lines are and where they could put a, a driveway. And then once they have that determined, they could talk to inspectional services um, and confirm with inspectional services that it meets the requirements for a driveway. And then they could come back to the board with that revised plan and uh, then, then the board could discuss the a, a plan that they that is approvable, um, right? And we can move forward from there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask a question, Mr. Riccadelli? Yeah. So in the um, in the six point one point one zero section, it talks about there's some reference to corner lots and um, yes. I'm, I'm hoping you ask this question so you can clarify for me a little bit. It says off street parking is permitted in the side yard and rear yard on a paved driveway, or in the case of a quarter lot, less than 6,000 square feet in the longer of the two front yards, yeah. up to a maximum of 24 feet in width. So, with that, so the longer would be Florence Avenue in, in this case. So, in the condition we just talked about, where we have a 20 foot, um, 20 foot deep setback along Forest Avenue, would that mm -hmm. 6,000 square feet be off of, accessed off of Hillside, like you just said? So if they extended that driveway? Well, here the lot is over 6,000 square feet. The lot is 6,900 square feet. So unfortunately they don't qualify uh, for that provision. Understood, okay, got it, thank you. Mr. Chair, the, yes, thank you, Mr. Holly. Um, the width of the driveway that is installed already is about twenty-two feet wide. So, when the new, like the proposed one that you suggested, adjacent to the building, the driveway does need to be adjusted accordingly, right? Because this is almost for a two park, two car park right now. So it would end up being a drive aisle of 18 feet or you know whatever the zoning bylaw would recommend for the drive aisle width. Yeah, so the maximum width of a driveway is 20 feet. So we should, yeah. Unless you get the 6,000 square foot condition and then it can be 24. But um, in this condition, that's correct. It, would on, it could only be 20 feet wide at the so street. It would have to narrow down to the parking space, um, but it would not be able to be right. as wide as 22 feet. Right. Because otherwise the driveway could be used for a tandem. I mean, the assumption is that the drive mm -hmm. aisle would be used for in and out of the vehicles rather than being parked. Yep. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, you're welcome. Are there any other questions from the board? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and then I'm going to um, take public comment. Um, so I will be opening the meeting for public comment. Uh, public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone can dial star nine to indicate they would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed 
through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. And I will do my best to show um, any documents uh, that anyone may wish to see. With that, uh, the first name on our list uh, is Mr. Kevin Koch. Hi. Okay. I'm Kevin Koch. Uh, 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 waiting for my wife to turn off her sound. Um, turn off her sound. Okay. Uh, Kevin Koch, 100 Florence Ave. We live uh, just about kitty corner to the uh, to this corner lot. Uh, some of my comments, I have been backing out onto Florence Avenue for the past 30 years. I haven't hit any kids walking to school yet. I haven't come close to hitting anybody. I think that's a spurious argument. Uh, if you use that logic, you would have to get rid of all the driveways that abut streets that kids walk to school on. And that just doesn't happen, okay, in the real world. Um, furthermore, there have been elderly tenants in that house before, and there's never been an extra driveway. And there has been a truck parked in the driveway on Florence Ave before by a previous tenant. So I find um, virtually all the arguments uh, that the uh, property owners have put forth to be specious. That's it. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is uh, Mr. Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, based on the discussion comments that I've heard so far, and I didn't figure this out until uh, Mr. Dupont was speaking, uh, this drive, this pad has already been built and a curb cut has been made. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? That is correct. So, so basically, these uh, applicants are basically coming back and asking forgiveness for something that's already been accomplished. Correct. Well, I, I would like to echo Mr. Dupont's comments. Uh, I think he's absolutely right that it's very unfair to the applicants if a contractor um, took these folks down a garden path and didn't tell them that what they were doing was illegal by current zoning laws without uh, permits. And making curb cuts, which of course is something you cannot do without approval, is just gets done and acted like that was okay to the applicants. That is uh, that is poor and that should not be allowed. And I agree that maybe a, a watch list or something that effect is a great idea. Um, all that being said, um, I, I would ask the applicant for you, what has happened to the tree that appears in the pictures? that were provided uh, right there where the pad is. What's the condition of the public street tree currently? Uh, Ms. Chang? Yes, um, we, we, we don't know anything too. So we hired the professional to came and then so uh, she, and then they told us, yeah, they can do it. So we trust the professional. So because yeah. we don't have any idea of like, like um, so, it, how to do it? So when they came, they they measure and then they say they can do it. So, um, that uh, they can do like 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 you know they are like a contractor. They they can mm -hmm. do everything. So that we believe it. So that's how. That's what. That the, it's not that we know. Uh, we know that we do it and then uh, it is we hire professional to do it. Yeah. Right. And then they say they can do it. Then we, we trust them. They have license. They yeah. They have everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I, I, I absolutely sympathize with the applicants on this issue um, because the contractor did not tell the relate to them the, the truth, mm -hmm. sadly. Um, that being said, I would hope the contractor is bonded, as most contractors are, and if that's the case and there's a problem here, uh, to, to remediate the situation may end up requiring a court action, just like uh, I believe, Mr. Chair, you, you implied. But my question is specifically about this street tree that we're looking at in the picture right now. 
Where what's the condition currently after this recent construction? Oh, the tree's still there. Uh, how 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 was the tree not damaged during the construction? I guess I would ask. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's not damaged. It's he didn't I, do anything I, I about the tree. Yeah, I don't think he touched anything. He don't oh, touch anything yeah. about the tree. Mm -hmm. The tree is 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 yeah. good. It's still there. Yeah, I don't see them cut anything. Yeah, yeah okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, I uh, as as the board is familiar, I often am particularly concerned about tree issues and the critical root zone, which is not visible. It's buried uh, around what looks to be roughly a six inch tree, maybe a four inch tree. I'm, it's hard to tell. Um, is definitely within where the curb cut and driveway pad has now, I guess, been placed. Even though this picture doesn't show it. And I am concerned there has been damage to this public street tree for now, which the uh, the current owners are liable if that tree now dies. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a whole there's a bylaw about this, which which the uh, applicants probably would be familiar. All right. All this being said, and I'll wrap up because I've been talking now for a while, um, is that uh, I don't understand why the board is in in the business of providing additional parking to applicants when the house was purchased with the current number of driveways and double double size driveway and double size garage, which is the condition in most of Arlington uh, where two families exist, uh, that we now want to provide additional parking for these folks, even though I know it's desirable, it's, it's not something I think the board is in the business of, of doing um, generally. And I, I don't, um, I'm, I'm concerned there's also another street here around the corner, which <laughs> I'm hoping is in good shape as well. But uh, a uh, driveway this close to a stop sign, even though Hillside's less busy street, is adding danger to a situation that there currently isn't uh, isn't there. And I just I just am not thinking this is a, a good idea all the all the way around. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Hanlon. So one of the things I think we probably should clear up because we, the applicant's presentation focused on why it is they thought it would be a good thing to have the additional driveway. Um, and we didn't really focus in, I mean, even if they had no reason or were totally wrong about whether it would be a good thing for them to have an additional driveway, they have every right to ask for one. Uh, and the standard is that it's not permitted unless there's a finding by us, in this case, uh, that the development for a, something that has a makes it more than one intersection with the street can be added in a matter that, one, avoids undue concentration of population, two, allows adequate provision of transportation, and three, conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. Um, and... So ultimately, regardless of their reasons or whether we're persuaded by their reasons for why they want the additional driveway, and they may have other reasons that they have not explained to us, um, the question that we have is whether A, they meet the special permit criteria under Section 3.3, and also whether they meet each of the three requirements that uh, that I just mentioned. And you know, th so far, the discussion has not really focused on that, although towards the end of his comments, Mr. Moore was getting into the area that just in terms of whether the desire, whether it's it's permissible, because it's not our business to give them or not give them driveways. Our business is to enforce the zoning bylaw, and we have a specific findings that we're supposed to make. And uh, uh, I think that it does make sense for us to be paying attention. Mr. LeBlanc's um, observation about and Mr. DuPont's about being close to the corner is important. But I just sort of like to encourage us to be focusing in on those things uh, and to have pay less attention to whether the applicants have a good reason for asking for it. Thank you, Mr. Henlon. Um, we do have uh, two similar hand raises uh, back in the queue. So I will turn first to uh, Mr. Cook for a second time. I want to make a clarifying comment. Can you turn your uh, sound off, please? 
I, I want to make a clarifying comment on the, there is no curb on Hillside. It's a berm and they paved up to the berm. And in order to get into the, to this new uh, driveway, you have to drive over the berm. Okay. That it was difficult to tell from the images if they had modified the that curbing or that berm or if or not. But thank you for that. Um, and then Mr. Moore for a second time. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I appreciate Mr. Handler's comments that that is uh, helpful in, in in focusing in the conversation. I'm sorry that I strayed away from from that. I uh, I guess I would add that additional impervious surface placed on what amounts to open uh, area of a yard uh, is not good for the environment. As we talk about, we're trying to encourage in, uh, pervious surfaces and what was there was pervious what is there now I believe I, I can't tell because there's no picture I'm assuming it's asphalt and impervious and we're not talking about getting rid of the current driveway uh, that's on Florence so we've increased the impervious surface um, and uh, I think the safety issue it, I'm not sure when I heard Mr. Handler reciting the conditions that have to be satisfied to grant such a special permit spoke a lot to safety, but he did in his comments talk to that. And I'd like to again, stress that this is too close to a stop sign intersection for a driveway in my in my humble opinion. Um, and I, I'm also frustrated that this has been built and now we're talking about asking forgiveness because that is problematic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Just to, we have frequently uh, taken into consideration how close uh, the uh, driveway is to the corner uh, in thinking about safety. And it, what we have usually done is uh, uh, relate that to allowing adequate provision of transportation. And as, as people who've been dealing with this by law, including us for a long time, are aware it's not really drafted in a way that focuses in on what at least I think are the proper considerations, one of which is safety, but they can be sort of mapped into it. And and that's what we've done. So for sure, uh, if this is an unsafe thing, it's, it's something that at least in our view in the past uh, would not have uh, allowed adequate provision of transportation. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, are there any other members of the public who wish to address the board on this item? Seeing none as chair, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, so what the board has before it is a request for a special permit. Um, and I think as we have discussed at this hearing, it's unfortunately not something that we are able to uh, approve in the, in the format that it's in today. Um, so I would uh, sort of turn to the applicant um, and sort of see how the applicant would like to proceed on this. Um, I would advise that you may want to um, take some time to talk to inspectional services about what would, what kind of a driveway you could create that would meet the criteria uh, for the board to be able to consider it. Um, and that may be uh, sort of, as we discussed before, a parking space adjacent to the house with a driveway that leads out onto hillside. Um, it might also, that might also be unfortunately too close to the corner. That's something um, that, that the special services could talk to you about because they would need to talk to the engineering division. Um, that's a decision for the engineering division when it comes to where the curb cut can go, um, where you can access the street. Um, the another alternative would be you could modify the garage so that the garage would be able to accommodate a larger vehicle, or you could remove the garage and have uh, more parking area in that in that vicinity. Um, but those are both things that you would need to discuss with inspectional services. Um, if <clears throat> if the board was to try to hold 
a vote this evening, I don't think the board has an option except to vote um, against the application. And doing so would um, encumber you that you wouldn't be able to come back before the board on a similar vote for two years. Um, and so I would recommend that uh, that you consider uh, whether you would be willing to continue the hearing um, for a, a period of uh, to, until the first meeting in um, until sorry the second meeting in May. It would be May. I think it's May twenty eighth. I think it's the right date. Um, and that would give you time to talk to the town um, and to sort of come up with a more definitive plan. Uh, and then you could come back to the board. And at that time, if it you have a, a plan, we can proceed. Uh, if you don't have a plan, we can then um, decide whether additional time is warranted or whether the application should be withdrawn. Um, does that make sense to you as a, a way to move forward? Um, oh, um, do, do you mean that we need to um, uh, find more <clears throat> professional to 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 we do it the plan is that what you mean so you would so you would probably need someone to to do some more drawing of the plan but you need to come up with a plan that meets the the requirements of this of the town's bylaws for a, a parking space and a driveway and so i think the first thing would be to have a conversation with the building inspector to discuss what you could and could not do um, as a possibility, because what you have done so far is is not allowed. It is something that we cannot approve. So you could talk to the building department about what you could do that we could approve. Um, and there, as I stated, there are a few different options for that. There may be a way to put a parking space on sort of half of what was laid down already on the, the half that's closer to the house, if it extends a little deeper into the lot so that there's a parking space there. That's a possibility, but it would need to, the, the there would be a need to make sure that the distances are maintained that are required. Um, an alternative would be if the, if the garage is hampering your ability to park where your existing driveway and parking spaces are, you may need, it may be, made more sense to you to modify the garage or remove the garage if that will create the parking area that you need uh, because you already have that parking area you already have a right to that parking area um, and so you are able to utilize that but that's a conversation that you need to have with the inspectional services department um, because we can't um, what we have before us tonight is not something that we are able to approve Oh, the second question is, um, I know it, it need to spend a lot of money to to, mm -hmm. to do that again Hold too. It. Um based on the financial problem like mm -hmm. now we're facing, um if if um if we um don't use the don't use that as a driveway, driveway use... then we do that just like Play for the... the kid for the play uh, basketball. like basketball instead because we're thinking about the so if we need don't, to don't use it as a driveway mm -hmm. yeah. if we need to spend a lot of money to do that again then i i don't think uh, i think yeah. it's difficult uh, I, time for, for i think for that's a, yeah yeah I think, again that's a com that's a conversation i think you would need to have with the building inspector oh, as oh, okay. to whether they can yeah because make we, that determination yeah because we don't have an extra step that 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 sure. can yeah, then higher. I uh, I mean, I mean higher the the, the if yeah no no it, <laughs> it, I very it, much I'm sympathize sorry. with your yeah. situation. Yeah yeah um, yeah okay um, so okay so if you like uh if you if you would be willing to to work with the to talk to the building department and um we would have you come back at our May twenty eighth meeting um. And at that time, if you have a new plan that we can consider, we can move forward with the, discussing that plan. Um, but if the decision is, you know, not to proceed with that, we can then withdraw your application. Um, so we can do one of those two options. But um, would you be willing to uh, 
to continue the hearing until that until May twenty eighth. Uh, should should I should I talk to the building department first? Should I or or? Yes. Yeah, so we would we would continue the hearing. We would vote to continue. So that gives you until May twenty eighth to come up with a new idea. And I would encourage you to talk to inspectional services as soon as possible. Oh, okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. To just bring harken us back to Mr. DuPont's point, in effect, the conversation that the applicant needs to have with inspectional services is the conversation that they ought to have been, they ought to have had uh, if the builder had been doing what he should be doing uh, in advance for them. Uh, and, you know, Mike will do will will do the best he can to to help them navigate uh the difficulties uh i would emphasize that that there's no guarantee that whatever plan what we're looking for is a plan that is possible to approve but it's not all it's not necessarily clear that we will in fact approve it there's no guarantees here because we haven't we haven't got a specific plan in front of us uh, and I, th I think that the the applicant should know that in in doing this, she's basically keeping the ball in the air, so to speak. And conceivably, if you have something, it's something that meets the requirements of the zoning bylaw. But some objections have been made, and we haven't ruled on any of those yet. So uh, I just don't want to I don't want to put the applicant in a position that they go to some trouble if they come up with a new plan and then it turns out that we think it's too close to the corner or there's some other reason why it is that it, we wouldn't want to approve it uh and then they would feel as if the rug had been pulled out from under them so mm -hmm. this is basically you get into the ballpark but it isn't to win the game yeah. okay so then uh with the applicant's consent um we would be looking to continue. So as I said, we would be looking to continue for, until Tuesday, May 28th. Um, and so with that, the board, the chair would accept a motion to continue the special permit hearing for 84 Hillside Avenue until Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hammond. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, sorry, with that, so the, the motion before the board is to continue the special permit hearing for 84 Hillside Avenue until Tuesday, May 28th, 2024, 7.30 p.m. Uh, roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That mot the motion carries, and uh, the hearing for 84 Hillside is continued until Tuesday, May 28th. Uh, very much thank the applicant and the neighbors for coming before us this evening um, and look forward to uh, hearing what progress they have made on the 28th. Uh, with uh, that, Chair. go. Ms. Hoffman? Uh, I just wanted to note that there's a comment in the chat, which I don't think we usually do, but um, relevant oh. to this hearing. So. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I will. Sp I will speak with uh, with Colleen Ralston, who's our uh, the zoning administrator about that to give to give them a little better sense as to how to proceed. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. I had not noticed that was there. Okay, so moving back to our agenda, this brings us to item four on our docket this evening, which is docket 3790-3840 Milton Street. Uh, if I could ask the 
applicants to introduce themselves and to let us know what they're proposing to do. Hi, how are you? This is Brendan Lyons, um, co-owner with Sean Lyons. He's on his cell phone as well. Um, a little background on the place. It was currently a duplex and we're turning it into a front and rear condo, townhouse type deal. And what we're going for Ready you still there? I lost Mr. Lyons. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. Sorry about that. Um, so currently it's an open porch, first floor, second floor type deal. And currently we're just trying to enclose it to add it to the livable square footage and extend it to the corner of the house. Right now it goes about 60% of the way in the front. Okay, so you said you are on your phone. Are you able to see the meeting at all? Yeah, I'm on Zoom. Okay. Oh, iPad, you're on Zoom. I'm on, okay. I, an iPad, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead. I'm just opening the plants here. Is this the right plan set? If it was a revised plan set that was submitted, this is the wrong one. Shoot. Plan. Updated plans. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is the drawing, the revised drawing set for this project. Um, so there's been some confusion as to what is the front and what is the rear um, in your plans. Okay. So is the for in your so if you're floor, looking at your that floor, current sheet, in the current yeah. sheet that you're looking at now. Um, yep. The bottom is the front. The dry that the that, bottom is the how, yeah. The bottom is the front. The staircase to enter is on the right hand side, which is also where the driveway is. Okay. So this is the basement first floor plans. This is uh, uh, proposed second and third floor plans. Okay, so the the reason for the, the confusion I was having is in the site plan, it shows the stairs leading directly away from the building at the front and towards the side at the rear. But on the building plans, it's the opposite, that the, the stairs lead towards the side on the front and lead directly away at the rear. So that, all right, now I understand the how this is arranged. So what you're saying is that the the two story the porch piece that we see at the front with the deck on top. So th that essentially currently is an it's an enclosed porch at the second floor and it's an open porch on the first floor and you're just seeking to enclose that existing porch. Correct, but on on the second level uh, it, it's going to be extended to the corner of the house, that front right corner. 
In other words, because above that's, that, that's what's shown, in, in, and, and then would that extend into the attic as well? Uh, yes. Okay, because that's what's shown in the rear elevation. I have, uh, hold on, where is it? You got me confused now. I apologize. Hold on. <laughs> so, yeah, in the rear, it will go to the attic as shown in that bottom right sketch. And okay. The top left will be the front where it, it'll be, excuse me, it will be enclosed. The current footprint just enclosed the front, have the porch on the yeah. side, and there'll be a, a little overhang, but not a full overhang to the corner as shown in the top right, if that makes sense. Okay. So there's an overhang over the stair or, oh, I see what you're saying, that the, the upper floor extends like a foot beyond the foundation wall at the Correct. front. Okay. All right. Now I understand what you're saying. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So then, yeah. So this is a front elevation here. So the existing front of the house at the first floor level remains where it is. They're proposing to extend the upper floor out a foot and then where the existing porch is today. Um, are you looking to demolish and rebuild the porch or are you leaving the existing porch and just infilling it? Apparently it's on Sonitube. We were going to do uh, uh, you know, a footing and everything. So we were going to demolish and rebuild. Also on the front, there is slight okay. termite damage. So that's another reason why I want to rebuild. Okay. Um, and is there sufficient width in the driveway to build out the um, the entrances that you've shown? Yeah, on the right hand side, there'll be the main entrance for the front rear. Okay. Because the proposed site plan does not show. The driveway and does not show those entrances so it's a little it, it's difficult to ascertain exactly how that's going to work are you keeping the existing garage is the existing garage going away uh it was already demolished but the pad okay. is there the pad will be removed and it's going to be grass okay how far back are you extending the parking Um, it's going to be aligned with the rear right corner, uh, about a foot pass. Other than that, it's the concrete slab that's going to turn into landscape. Okay. So is the, is that the back corner of the existing, the existing house or the back corner of the extended portion? Existing house. The existing house. Okay. Um, So then this would be the, in the bottom left is the side that is facing the uh, adjacent house. Um, that's a lot over. And then the proposed rear elevation is in the bottom right corner. And then we have framing plans as well. Uh, and so this will be a front back duplex. Um, right. Yeah, okay. And the board is in receipt of a memo from inspectional services on this project, um, noting that the property is a two-family dwelling in the R2 district. The applicant is seeking permission to extend an enclosed first floor open porch. The applicant is seeking a special permit under 539D projections into minimum yards as the existing porch projects into the front setback. The second floor will also be replaced and extended at a less non-conforming projection than the existing porch. Applicant also proposes to enclose the rear porches, which do not project into the rear setback. And special services believes that a large that the large triangular area in the rear yard meets the usable open space requirement. 
While Spectral Services has used triangles for open space in the past, the applicant has been informed the Zoning Board of Appeals will need to determine whether the open space requirement has been met. So with that, I will turn to the board and see if there are questions. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I this is more a matter of uh, clarification and definition and perhaps with a little help from um, my architect uh, colleague. So when I looked at the section 5.3.9 projections into minimum yards, I wanted to make sure that I understood because it refers to um, porches and enclosed entrances, et cetera. And then the way that it was phrased by the applicant, he, I believe, said for the addition of living space. And so I don't know that it is, you know, whether it's a distinction without a difference, you know, addition versus porch. But in the past, I've been more accustomed to us dealing with somebody who's literally taking a porch and enclosing it. This seems a little bit different to me, and I want to make sure I understand what the difference is. So um, if it is being converted, and, and maybe a porch is the same thing as living space, but if it's being converted into interior living space, does it then change the character of it from a porch to an addition? And does that, if that were the case, would that make any difference? Because in um, section B, it says second story additions within the required front yard setback may extend no more than one foot beyond the existing building wall. So mm -hmm. I was just trying to, you know, get a better feel for how this section relates to what's being proposed as it doesn't seem like it's the stereotypical, here we have a porch, we're gonna make it a little bigger and we're gonna close it because I'm not sure it's just a porch. Mr. Right. Chairman? Could that... Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to be, to some extent, the language of the zoning bylaw doesn't really completely track the normal English that we use. And I don't have the zoning bylaw in front of me, but I remember looking at the definition of a porch and part of the definition of a porch is that it's unenclosed. So whenever you enclose a porch, you're making it something that isn't a porch. And under some circumstances, that would be uh, that would be an addition of some sort. So I think, I mean, the standards we apply to that are basically the same. If If, anything that only applies to porches would only apply to them at least as far as i can see would only apply to them if they're unenclosed because again if they are enclosed they don't really count as a porch Can I interject? Um, yes, I'm trying to trying to open up the floor plans better so I can sort of try to understand what, what they're looking to do here. Um, the second floor the second floor is already yep. livable space. It's it's just, the second floor is enclosed. But I apologize, okay. Sean Lyons, I'm late. The second floor is already enclosed um, in its livable space. In the second floor, excuse me, in the first floor is just a regular porch. Like right. a lot of old porches, they're kind of sagging and for the it, um, lack of bed, for lack of other purposes, they look like hell. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we're not going to make it any larger. We're just going to enclose it and make both the first floor and second floor into livable space. Okay. And rather than the stairs coming off the front, which almost come out to the sidewalk, that would the stairs would be eliminated and they'd be coming out the side. 
So it's okay. the same Mr. footprint on the on the same footprint that's existing. So there would be no change in where that front wall is of the enclosed upper porch and the lower porch would be at that same would then be enclosed to that same extent. Correct. The only the only thing that's changed is the stairs are going to be coming out the side rather than the front. Okay. M Mr. Chair. Mr. Holly? Um the the proposed plan is different than what the architectural drawings call for. And so is what the applicant is mentioning in the phone call. Um, the front, the steps are coming out and not on the side, but the architecture, architectural plans do have them going off the side there. So it's exactly opposite of what is being talked. Oh, oh, please, one more, one more thing. Right, the existing house mm -hmm. has the stairs coming off the front porch towards the sidewalk. The right. new plan, had, when I said off the side, I meant off the side of the of the front porch, which is going to be now and then closed. So that's what I meant. I didn't mean off the side of the house. Okay. Right. But I think what but Mr. Hulley is getting to is that the, the, the plot plan is incorrect. Right. That's correct. Yeah. The plot plan shows it coming off of the right. And, and Mr. Chair, if I could add something, I, I think uh, I I think that um, just in general, you know, uh, looking at the plot plan and then looking at the the ground level plan, uh, you know, there's it looks like there's a new entry staircase proposed along the driveway side that uh, is shown on the architectural plan but not on the plot plan right so i think it's a little um it, it doesn't seem to align you know between the two so it's a little hard to evaluate mm -hmm. on that particular side of the house which is if you're in the middle of the street looking at the house on the right hand side is your larger side there's a, and all it um, shows is that you're going to come out a regular uh, door that comes out and a stairway coming down. You're correct. That is not on the um, plot plan. So, so if I may, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, so, um, do you know? Uh, so that that goes into the width of the existing driveway. Do you know how much width remains for that driveway? How much width remains for the driveway? You can either. The driveway um, is not going to go as, as far as the back of the house. It, it could, but that you'd have a much better yacht. There's plenty of room to pack two cars side by side from oh. the um, so I, I believe to at, the beginning, at the beginning of the conversation, we talked about that driveway going all the way to the back corner of the house. Is that not the case? It's going to stop shorter. It depending upon how much green space they want, we can make it. You could actually make the driveway all the way the whole length of the lot, but it would be like uh, an asphalt yard, which nobody wants. You can clearly park two cars side by side between the sidewalk and going into the halfway up the side of the house. And you have plenty of room. Right. But I think what we're getting at is that you're requesting from the board a special permit. And we're saying that these are aspects of things that we need to consider when we're granting a special permit that we don't have any of the information. We're just relying on your verbal description of what you may or may not do, depending on whoever they is that may want more yard or more driveway. I believe I, I was under the impression that the special permit was for the uh, front porch. No, it is, but we do have criteria we need to verify in the granting okay. of the special permit. Um, and the, those do have to do with traffic congestion and pedestrian safety. And you are changing the pattern of how the driveway is being utilized. No. Same driveway. 
Yeah, but if you drive into the driveway, you're going to drive into the new side entrance to your house. No. No. Oh, all kinds How much of distance there. is there between the side of the this piece of, the the new stairs you're building on the side? How much space is there between those stairs and the side lot line? It's fifteen feet. Easy. You can also make your driveway. Right now, the existing driveway is two cars wide. You can put two cars wide and two cars going backwards before you even hit the stairs. Well, according to the dimensions, the stairs are only one from the front of the house to that first stair is less than a car length. Um, I, you must be driving a big car. I mean, a parking space is eight by 18. Yep. And it looks like it's. Maybe six feet plus ten, ten and a half, seventeen and a half feet to the okay. center of this window that's already past that first step. Okay. When we were with talking to the building department, and we've talked with them several times, mm -hmm. um, that was never an issue. If it was, it would it would be put on the plot plan. Any. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as a, a single driveway going back or a double driveway going back. Naturally, a double driveway is more appealing because if one person doesn't have to bother the other one to get their car out. Mm -hmm. When you do a double, it's not as long, it's not as deep, and it allows you to have more green area. If anything, the driveway is going to be smaller than it is it is now. No, I think we just want to conf be able to confirm that it's of an adequate size to meet the requirements of the bylaw. Um, because the, the other thing is that, as we had read the memo that was provided to us by Inspectional Services, asks the board to verify whether the requirement for usable open space is being met and there's no indication on the drawings about how usable open space is intending to be met um the right now there's very little open open space because there's a garage slab there the garage slab mm -hmm. comes out and you bring the grass area open space is the existing backyard where the slab is and going forward to the stairs. And the only thing that's not on the plan is how deep you're gonna put the driveway. And we can change that as to how much open space they want. If you, I, I believe there's more than enough to satisfy any of the codes. Okay, I appreciate that you're that you you're confident that it does so, but we need to have some degree of evidence that it does. We can't just assume that it does. We we need to be able to verify that compliance is being met with the requirements of the bylaw. Okay, what would you like? So you want it on the plot plan? We would like so I think we need a plot plan that's that's accurate, that shows the stairs leading from the building the way they're actually leading, that shows the actual outline of the building the way the actual outline of the building is going to be, and shows where the usable open space is in a form that's identified so that we can evaluate whether there's sufficient usable open space. Okay. What do you want to do now? Um, so I, 
I would like to ask if there are other questions from the board, if there are other items that the board thinks needs to be, um, that they have questions on that, you, that you'd be able to address at this time, or if there's uh, further questions that the board would want to have resolved moving forward. Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mr. Fire DuPont. Away. So I, I just want to make sure, so, and, you know, taking into account Mr. Hanlon's comments about, you know, when we enclose a port should, you know, sort of necessarily, if I'm not misquoting or misstating, necessarily sort of creates this living space. But I want to be comfortable um, with uh, Section 5.3.9 um, because I don't necessarily understand the plan. So I realize that there is existing living space on the second floor in what we're calling the enclosed porch. I believe it's been described though that that is also that is being that porch is being ex extended to the right. Is, no. no. Is something was I thought being extended across the, the face of the structure. If, if, if you look at the plans on the first floor, it's the exact same size of the existing porch, only it's going to be enclosed as livable space. You're talking about the when first you, floor? Please, Are let you, me finish. Go ahead. On the second floor, this, which is the same size as the first floor, which is the same size as existing, is going to be enclosed as livable space. What I believe you are talking about is the rest of the first sec excuse me rest of the second floor candle is over the first floor about a foot so that on the second floor if you look at the plan on the first floor and in, in the side side it shows us the second floor sticks out a foot so is there any expansion of the i'll call it living space on the second floor We are going to change this into two condos rather than first floor, second floor. It's going to be front and back. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, maybe you can help me if you understand what my question is. So looking at the front of the house, and this I, it just may be that I'm mistaken, but looking at the front of the house, I thought I heard somebody say that the second floor was going to the whatever that porch is that we're calling our enclosed porch on the second floor is that being expanded at all so i would ask mr line to correct me if i'm wrong but i believe the section at, at the on the right hand side at the first floor level that's that's shown with vertical siding that that is the position of the existing front wall of the house correct and portion on the left with horizontal siding is the is where the existing porch is today so those dimensions don't change it's just going to be reframed and enclosed and then Correct. the portion of the second sort of in the middle on the second and third floors um with the horizontal banding again that is projected a foot forward of the existing uh front wall of the house um, Correct. and it continues up to the roof line Correct. Correct. So, okay, Mr. great. Chairman, Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, either way, I, I guess I just want to make sure that if, you know, we're considering this, whether it's tonight or at another meeting, that I understand. So, is there any, does this trigger at all 5.3.9C, which is very brief? It says second story additions within the required front yard setback may extend no more than one foot beyond the existing building wall. And so the question I have is, is it the ex existing building wall is what? And is this, ex so there's gonna be an extension forward, is that what we're saying? Yes, so that the, the on that front elevation, the vertical, the portion with vertical siding is the existing front wall within the front yard, step, but it is already within the front wall setback. Front yard setback, so that upper portion at the second floor level that he is, is, is describing as sort of being cantilevered a foot forward, 
So as long as that doesn't extend more than 12 inches forward, it. it's compliant with sections with subsection C. Okay, just if it comes out more than that, it's not compliant with subsection C. And then we're into 8.1.1 probably or something. I don't know. Anyway, thank you. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I understand now. Yeah. If it came forward more than that, it would be a new nonconformity. Anybody else? Anybody? Are there other questions from the board? I, I just had one about the um, the new front porch. And I was just wondering if we could yes. um, get some dimensions on that. Since it is a new porch projecting into the front yard, there's some requirements about that in 5.3.9 about the distance it can project into the yard and, and the like. Um, it's a bit tough to tell what those dimensions are uh, with the drawings we have in front of us. Okay, I can have that done on the plot plan and the plan plans. Great. Okay. And if you could also just just dimension the overhang at the second floor level, I just unfortunately I can't find what that dimension is. It, it, you can't find it because I don't think it's there. I'll take yeah. care of that. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I, I guess this is a question that probably is is best put to you um, but my my understanding of the legal framework of this case um, is that uh, section D says that porches, decks, steps and landings in the required setback are not considered to be within the foundation wall and may not be enclosed, extended or built upon except by, pers by special permit so the thing that authorizes a special permit in this situation is simply that last sentence, which was which was actually recently put into the zoning bylaw um, at at our request. But Section D doesn't actually have any um, doesn't actually have any requirements in in Section five point three point nine. Uh, except that it has to meet the requirements for a special permit. That's at least the way I would look at it. Uh, and so then the, we go basically to Section 3.3.3, .3, which sets forth what what those things uh, with those things are. Uh, before the before the special permit language was put in here, it was generally assumed, as I understand it, that the extension of the porch could be done as a matter of right so that this is essentially made it discretionary with us uh, it, that you have to have a case-by-case -case look. So I guess the question I have is whether I've got the standard right or whether there are other provisions of law other than 3.3.3 um, that, that would affect uh, our ability to approve this. So my recollection of where to the this section 539D uh was put on the put on the on the docket um at the request of the zoning board because we had had a couple of cases where uh there had been an existing house that had an open porch and the applicants had sought to enclose the porch and then request a mudroom on front of the porch claiming that it was within three and a half feet of the front of the building because the front of the building was now where that porch was. And so what we were seeing were uh, some properties where that the front wall of the house was slowly creeping. You know, if it was already within the setback, it was it was creeping closer and closer to the edge of the of the lot. And so we wanted to uh, accomplish two things. One was to uh, put some review into the enclosure of open uh, open porches that are sort of a part of the public realm at the edge of the, of the property, but also to clearly state that if you enclose a porch, it doesn't move the front wall of the house forward. So that when we, there are provisions that talk about the front, beyond the front line of the foundation wall, which is like 539A talks about that, 539B talk about that, that, when you enclose a porch, you are not moving that line forward. It remains where the existing foundation wall of the house is, even if you enclose the porch. But either way, I mean, again, 
if it's enclosed, it isn't a porch by under the bylaw. Correct. And so therefore the provisions of the bylaw that have to do with allowing you to extend porches into the setbacks uh, are not really what applies. What really applies here is uh, if you have room that used to be a porch and you're taking the porch mm -hmm. away and turning it into living space of some sort, uh, we assume it's habitable, but it doesn't have to be. It could be unheated. Um, that the uh, that if you do that, that would still be okay by by special permit, even though it would result in the building actually expend being built within the front within the front yard because this has lost its its characterization as a porch, so to speak. And and I I get that and why it was a useful uh a useful thing to do uh but again it seems to me that the only thing that actually then applies since this is not a special regulation that's unlike large additions for example that sets up its own separate criteria so the only criteria that i can that i can see that would apply is section 3.3.3 um, and that would be the way in which we'd have to look at it but at the end of the day, what you get is, I mean, what you may get is something that looks like a enclosed porch uh, with windows and things, and maybe it's unheated and it's sort of as half a porch. Um, or may you may get something that basically incorporates what used to be porch into the building. And either way, it's enclosing it. Uh, and the zoning bylaw doesn't make any distinction between those two situations. I think that would be correct. You lost me. <laughs> um, so at this point, um, we do need to uh, open the hearing for public comment, um, which we have to, which we do for all cases. So with that, um, if there is anyone who wishes to uh, to speak to the special permit application for thirty eight forty Milton Street, um, I would ask you to please raise your hand using the um the button on the under the reactions tab in zoom or if you're calling in you can dial star nine and that will raise your hand um the chair will call upon you ask you uh for your name and address of the record and then if you can um uh, tell us your concerns uh so with that um i would recognize uh karen petho oh hi thank you, you. yeah um I'm a homeowner next door at um, 4244 Milton Street, mostly just called in just to find out more about what was happening. Um, the, um, Brendan, I had met you in the fall and it was nice, nice to meet you and you know, the work has started next door, which is, was just going fine. Um, we did all, the neighbors all received the plot plan and it doesn't show those stairs on the side of the house. So I guess just really just sort of curious about that. It looks like that's probably the main entrance to both units then off the side. Um, and just also, it seems like maybe that's not in the purview of the zoning board, whether that's something that's, um, it's, just, it's just allowed. It's not something that enters into sort of the special permit consideration. So, so mostly just curious about that because it's not on the plot plan. So it's something that was different than what we thought was happening with the house. Uh, Mr. Lendick, you could you address, is that gonna be the sort of the, the primary entrance for the houses? Yes, yes, it is on the driveway uh, side. Yes. And how are you? Nice to see you again. On the right hand side, the driveway yep. side, the side that's the furthest away from Mass Ave, yep. halfway down the house, there's going to be two doors one for the one front, which is going to be the front entrance for the back unit, and the, the other one's going to be the front entrance for the front unit. Okay. Great. Thank you for that clarification. So, so, so you'll be walking out your front door, which is actually on the side of the house, almost steps into your driveway. Great. Convenient. Thank you. Um, look great. Uh, next speaker uh, is Mr. Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Uh, as I often do, and the board members have heard before, I. Um, I make comments about the trees relative to the work that's going to be done. And clearly there's a, a, a significant mature, what looks to be a very healthy street tree right in front of this house. And it sounds to me like 
even though we're talking about enclosing porches, et cetera, et cetera, there's going to be a very significant renovation done to this home, uh, particularly, I guess, on the second floor, or maybe also the first floor, based on the discussion. And I want to just uh, uh, remind the applicants that they're going to have to develop a tree plan to protect this tree um, during whatever construction is going on. Um, yep. Because uh, it's a significant tree. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. That, that, has, that has already been done. We just uh, went to the tree people um, and uh, we got all the paperwork and plans to them. And you're 100% correct. It's a beautiful tree. It's going to stay there. Nobody's going to mess it up. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is all the water and sewer lines that you yeah. have to bring in. Sure. Thank you, no, Mr. Absolutely. Thank you. Good news. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Are there any other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment for this hearing. Um, so with that, the, the board has re requested the um, the applicant uh, revise the site plan to um, make it coincide with the, the building plans that were submitted. Um, and there were some suggestions from members of the board about uh, some additional dimensions, if they could be added to the plan to just sort of clarify exactly what it is that we're looking at. Um, were there any other things that the board had wished to see on this application? Mr. Chair. Seeing none, I would ask that. Oh, please, Sorry. Mr. Tahali. Yeah, a quick, um, quick, on the plot plan, there is these blue cyan lines for the in the existing which probably is for a patio and a walkway it, all that is gone is the understanding now uh, the, because the proposed plan, plan doesn't show the approach we, you know uh, at what point the driveway ends that would help to clarify a few things um just just updating the proposed plot plan the right you know yeah. right not a problem i will take care of that um, these People that do the plot plans, they don't seem to be too interested in the driveways, but I will uh, <laughs> make sure that they do that. Yep. I was more interested in keeping the green, uh, the, the, as much green space as I can, and then do the driveway around the green space, opposed to putting a driveway in and hoping you have enough green space. Right. That, you know, and, 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 and these, a lot of these, um, engineers or, or architects or uh, surveyors kind of leave the driveway and green space up to someone other than them, themselves. And when we get into a, a meeting like yours and you're looking for all the answers, we look like idiots. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, part of, part of our concern too, is that, you know, the, the plans you submit have to be registered with the registry of deeds. And so we just want to make sure yep. that they're they're accurate for for everyone's sake. So okay, um, great. Um, do you have a sense as to how much time you would need to revise those? End of the week. Because <laughs> uh, we could. Put, um, Colleen, what does our schedule look like for May fourteen? May fourteenth, we have. Um, I believe we have five on that docket already. Okay. All right, so we would be looking at May 28. We only have one for that date right now. Okay. All right, so would, would, the, would the applicant be amenable to continuing to May 28? Do I have a choice? Um, I mean, we could, it would be difficult to do on the 14th. Let me put it this way. Yeah. You're the boss. <laughs> I, can I do some yep. work with the exception of the front porch and, and the thing on the front? No, excuse me, the side? Yeah. I mean, I I kinda... You would need to discuss that with the, with the building inspector, but I think you can do any work that doesn't require the approval of the board. Oh, good. No problem. Okay. 
So no, what, I would what confirm date? that with, with Mike Champa first. Okay. So it would be May 28th. All right. Um, that's all right. It, it, it is, is, can I go on standby and, and go at the end of the end of the night on, on the, on the other day, or, or if I were to pass it into you people ahead of time and you can talk amongst yourselves and maybe not even need me. Um, I guess I would ask the board, would the board be comfortable taking on a sixth case on the, on May 14th? Or would you prefer to cap it at five and proceed with the 28th? We'll pay extra. <laughs> <laughs> you could quadruple our salary and it wouldn't matter. <laughs> uh, as we get yeah. as we are unpaid volunteers. Yeah. Um I'd prefer to have it at five because we don't know how long it'll go. And then if yeah. you're passing things in without the applicant present, that presents a problem as well. We're not, you know, gonna just want to sit there and look at stuff and then, you know, have questions that can't be answered, which then would necessitate a being made a sixth hearing. And I just think that's beyond our sort of normal scope. Okay. And we do have uh, 165 Franklin on that night, which has been historically a long hearing. No, that's very true too. And right. that, you know, that that's supposedly is going to be our final one on that. So I think it is going to take us a bit. Okay. So with that, um, I would present a motion to continue the special permit hearing for 3840 Milton Street until Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Okay, moved. not a problem. The, the, paper, the paperwork, you want me, do you want me to pass it into the building department, Mr. Champa, yes, or do you want me to get it to you in another, or get it to you some other way? No, if you if you can get it to Ms. Ralston at the, um, at the building department, that'd be great. Okay, done deal. You guys have been very kind. All right, so we do need to have just a roll call vote of the board to approve the motion to continue. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? And the chair votes aye. So we are uh, continued on. Uh, 3840 Milton Street until Tuesday, May 28th. Uh, my thanks to the to the applicants and to the uh, the residents for coming out this evening and look forward to seeing you at the at the following hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, going back to our agenda. Brings docket 3792 529 Summer Street. Um, if I could go ahead and ask the applicants to go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us what they are looking to do. Hi, can you hear me okay? We can. Okay. Uh, my name is Lara Rubenstein. I'm the homeowner, and I'm here with Jenna Ellison, who's um, the architect from the construction company we're working with. We've been living here for about seven years, and when we bought this house, we had no children, and now we have two young children and we both mostly work from home and we need some more space. Um, so we are looking to do a first floor addition that basically adds a bedroom and a walk-in closet and then modifies a pantry and bathroom that are already existing. Great, thank you. Um, Ms. Ellison, did you want to walk us through the plans? Sure, I'd be happy to. Do you want me to share my screen or do you want to pull up? Colleen, you do you mind sharing, giving her permission to share? She is all set. Great, thank okay. you so much. Can you see this okay? We can. All right, so um, this is a site plan of their property right now. So they have, are at the corner of Summer Street and Sunset Road. Um, so a pretty unique lot on um, the grade changes, um, I think about seven feet from Summer Street around the corner to Sunset Road. Um, 
In the back here, they have a fence along the sidewalk um, that's about five feet, um, and then stairs that go down to about five feet below their first level. So there's a pretty big grade change here, and I'll pull up some pictures too that'll be more helpful. Um, so essentially in this, where this patio is now, we're going to build um, a one-story addition. Um, and the, there is a, an existing addition on the back now that we're modifying um, that Lara mentioned. Um, and then we do have um, the requirements for open space still at the corner here. We're not touching the driveway, um, not making anything else impervious. Um, so this is the summer street side here and then um, the sunset road on the back here. This is the back patio. This is the existing house as it um, is now. We're removing these stairs and building um, the bedroom at the back here. And then, um, so this is the proposed plan. Um, so modifying the bathroom, changing the pantry, creating a hallway um, to the first floor bedroom with the closet. Um, so the lot is currently existing non-conforming um, and we're not proposing to go closer than five feet. Um, so it's a, 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 a pizza shape that we could build. So we're trying to be respectful of it and not go any closer than we really have to to get in um, a reasonable size bedroom for them. So um, these are the elevations here at the back. Um, and let me open up um, the photos for you because I think that will be helpful. And so this is an aerial of their house now, so showing the sort of pie shape here at the corner. Um, and then a few photos essentially from um, the Sunset Street here. So this is the existing space and then we're going off the back corner there. We're still no. seeing the aerial view. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, let me see. Um, tell it how to share. Hold on. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, no. <laughs> All right. You see that okay? So oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, so the grade change is pretty significant. Um, so as you go down to Summer Street, so essentially this is their first floor currently. Sorry, it's a little <laughs> kind of an awkward picture, but um, oh maybe that one shows it a little bit better. So as you go around the curve, you're at grade level here at their driveway, and as you go up, so they're sort of in like a little bowl here. Um, that's the patio that we're trying to build over right now. Um, and then as you can see, the neighbors have similar additions at the back there. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so that's the patio there. And then this is their neighbor to give you a little bit of context. So I don't know if that's helpful. Do you need anything else from me? Um, so essentially not conforming to the um, front yard setback on Sunset Street. Okay, so the existing house as it so the the house is it's it's a quirky lot because it basically yes. has three three on three sides. So yes. it has three front yards, and yes. definition the last side is a rear yard. So there's a rear yard, I believe, between the dwelling and the the line that it shares with the adjacent houses, and then the other yards are all front yards. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So the existing the house appears to be non-conforming yep. with regards to the front yard setback on Sunset Road and in the rear yard setback, but it is it is compliant with the front yard setback for Summer Street, but we're not doing anything in that direction. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. And then um, the, the dashed blue line indicates the area that's the usable open space. Is that correct? Yep. yep. Perfect. Um, and then on the plans themselves, yeah. um, on the basement level, so it look, are they, are you showing windows on both sides of the existing 
um, access. Are you building a new, I guess, are you building a new crawl space? Is that what this is? Correct. Yep. So oh, okay. it's um about five feet. So you can't really stand up in it. But um, okay. we're thinking like bike storage and stuff like that underneath. So they have that currently, which is this seven foot yep. space under the current bathroom. Um, and then we're essentially adding to that storage space. So it won't be finished usable space, but. Okay. And then on the first floor level, uh, one of the things you're doing is getting rid of the second means of egress off the first floor. So um, they have, we're... um yes, so they have a means of egress here. Um and then they have a office um where is the... here? Oh sorry, my mouse. Can you see that? <laughs> the front, <laughs> there the front there, door. There the front door, yep. Um, so on this level, there is not a second means of egress, but um, on the ground floor, they have an office that they use that has a full door directly under this that leads to okay. their driveway. So they have these big windows here um, because that grades so much lower on Summer Street. Um, okay. And it, it's hidden here under this, but um, essentially a retaining wall. Um, let me see if I could try to find that on the site plan here. Um, so this, the driveway level goes underneath and there's another door there. So that would be their second means of egress. Oh, good. Okay. From the house. Yep. Perfect. Um, those are the questions that I had. Were there, uh, questions from the board? Not seeing any. Um, so this was submitted to the board as a variance request um, because of the the location in the uh, in the setback. Um, but I wanted to pose a question to the board in this regard. So what is being requested is to extend, they're looking to extend the existing non-conformities on the property. Um, so they have an existing non-conforming front yard for Sunset Road that they're looking to extend. And they have an existing rear yard setback non-conformity that they're looking to extend. And my understanding, and I would ask others to correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, under state law, the board is allowed to grant um, extensions of existing nonconformities as a special permit with a finding that it is not substantially more detrimental than the existing condition. Um, I just wanted to see how the board felt about if, if that would apply in this case. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. DuPont. Uh, so are you suggesting that the existing dwelling is non-conforming and therefore the addition would be an extension of the non-conforming and under 8.1.1, we could consider it? I, th I think that was what the, the decision in Brookline, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head, um, that that's what the courts have said is that if you have a, a, a one and two family dwelling and you have an existing nonconformity, if you are intensifying the degree of nonconformity, you don't require a variance, but you can do it by special permit with a finding that it is not substantially more detrimental. I don't know. Mr. Hanlon, does that meet with your recollection? Yes, uh, more or less. I, I think that the difficulty is when figuring out what is uh, what is sort of a new nonconformity and what is an extension of an existing nonconformity is something about which there's there's quite a bit of of difference of opinion. Uh, mm -hmm. We generally have been fairly. 
liberal about uh, thinking that that building out into a setback or something like that, if there's an existing nonconformity, we're relatively, we have been pretty liberal about that and uh, used the special permit as much as 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 much as we can. Um, you know, the treatises are not 100% in accordance with that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, but that has been our practice. And this is sort of, you know, developing it in, in, in the same, in the same way. Um, so I, I'm not, I mean, normally if you're talking about the, the extension of a nonconformity, uh, you have, you start with, um, uh, a finding of the zoning inspector of the building inspector, uh, that, you know, tells us whether he finds that this is either a new nonconformity, an extension of an existing nonconformity, or sometimes an extension of an existing nonconformity that is so little that it is de minimis. Uh, and we don't have that here. And if mm. I think if we're going to be adventurous, that we probably ought to have, ought to consult with the uh, with the building ins inspector about that to to get at least his view first as to what this is. Okay. I will say this is an unusual because of the sh the shape of, in my view primarily but also the to maybe to some extent the change this is a better case for a variance than many that we see so Great well thank you very much for that um are there any other questions from the board or else I'm going to proceed to public comment Okay so I will go ahead and open this hearing for public comment. We take public comment as it relates to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. If you would like to address the board and um, you can select the uh, raise hand under the reactions tab in Zoom, or if you're on the phone, you can dial star nine to indicate you'd like to speak. Um, we ask you to give your name and address of the record and then uh, provide us with your comments. Are there any members of the public attending this hearing who would like to address um, this hearing for 529 Summer Street. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period for uh, 529 Summer Street. Um, so what the board has before us uh, as, as described by the applicant and their designer um, is a a modest addition to an existing uh, house on a very peculiar lot at the intersection of Sunset Road and, and Summer Street. Um, it is essentially a triangular lot where uh, two of the faces are front yards and uh, one side of the property is a rear yard and there is no side yard to this property. Um, the proposed, the location of the house is in the center of the lot. The proposed addition uh, would be to the north, uh, let's say northeast of that uh, on the Sunset Road side, um, and would be constructed predominantly in the setback. Um, certainly, in regards to the, the the required setback, and also in terms of the uh, the projected setback based on the location of the existing building. Um, so, I'd raise the question for the board about whether or not uh, they felt. Could be considered um, as a as a special permit in regards to um, extension of existing nonconformity. It, uh, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of appetite for that necessarily, um, and so we can, we will proceed uh, reviewing this as a uh, a variance application. So as you know, the variances have there are four tests under state law that a variance must meet um the first is that circumstances relating to the soil condition shape or topography especially affecting such land or structures but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it's located that would substantiate the granting of a variance uh section the second is why literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning bylaw specifically relating to the circumstances affecting the land or structure noted above would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or appellant. 
Uh, the third is how desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. And the fourth is how desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw. Um, and the board does need to make a positive finding on all four aspects um, in order to grant a variance. So with that, excuse me, um, the first requirement um, uh, are the circumstances relating to soil condition, shape, and topography, especially affecting such land, but not affecting generally the zoning district. So I think as, as Mr. Hanlon had noted, this is a very uh, oddly shaped lot uh, and, and not at all common for um, this portion of town. Most lots are uh, either you know, rectangular or trapezoidal. Uh, it's very unusual to have a triangular lot, especially one where uh, the predominant sides are all front yards and you only have and a rear yard and um which dramatically limits where you are able to uh expand a prop expand within the the property and as the applicant had noted there's a substantial grade change um the topographic change from summer street to the sunset road side uh so anything that is proposed that is along sunset is going to be uh, sort of sunken into the the landscape relative to something mm -hmm. that would occur um, closer to Summer Street. Um, so it asks the board if they feel that these circumstances related to the the shape and the topography of the lot would substantiate the granting of a variance. Mr. Chairman. Sure. Mr. Riccadelli? I've heard of Mr. Riccadelli. I, I, oh, thanks, thanks, Mr. Chippo. Um, no, I, I agree. I think, you know, it's, uh, this is a really uniquely shaped lot. I think the applicant did a good job uh, and, and the architect did a good job explaining uh, both the topography, but also the unique conditions on the site. I think the diagram that's on the screen right now really speaks to that, which is that um, the, the buildable by right buildable portion of uh, land is uh, extremely small on the site, much smaller than we would see in a, a standard um, or a more standard sized lot uh, in, in this neighborhood of Arlington. Uh, and then with the open space requirements, um, there's actually sort of no opportunity for expansion. Uh, so I, I think that I could make that, um, that finding on my end. Thank you, Mr. Riccadelli. I guess I would ask if there are any members of the board who would not be able to make this finding. <laughs> Hearing none, I will move on to the second, which is by literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning bylaw, specifically relating to the circumstances affecting the land or structure noted above, would involve substantial hardship financial or otherwise to the petitioner or appellant. Um, I think as Mr. as Mr. Riccadelli was pointing out in his comments, um, if the applicant was forced to uh, do any expansion or improvements to the home that the applicant would want to do is limited uh, by the shape of the lot to a small triangular area in the center. And the only area that is available would um, remove the usable open space, which is required in order to uh, expand the gross floor area of the home. And so it, um, the, the, it, due to the shape of the lot, the applicant is unable to, um, to fully um, uh, develop a property which meets their needs um, which may be met on a lot that would be more appropriately shaped for the neighborhood. Um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So I, I agree with everything that the chair has said, but want to caution us not to go too far down that road because at that point, hardship turns into anything that the applicant 
of not being able to do anything that the applicant wants to do. Here, we don't have to go nearly that far. The The request is, is very, very modest. Uh, not so modest as to be insignificant, but we also know that in this neighborhood and throughout Arlington, the pressure there is to sort of try to deal with today's housing market by uh, expanding homes in, in, in Arlington. We, we, we have seen very much bigger proposals than this, and even with a variance, they are pretty limited in what they can do. Uh, and it seems to me that that because what it is they want to do is is so ordinary. It's it's the usual people thing that people are doing. Uh, it seems to me that it rises to the level of a hardship. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there any members of the board who feel they would not be able to make this make a finding on this test? Hearing none, proceed to test three. Uh, how desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Um, as I had sort of alluded to at the start, this is a very modest little addition. It is actually because of the topography, it, it is actually much less uh, apparent from the, from the public way than it would be otherwise, uh, where it really is tucked into the, into the hillside. Um, and I cannot see how its addition uh, to this neighborhood would quantify as a, as a substantial detriment. Um, are there any comments from the board? Are there any members of the board who feel they would not be able to make a, make a finding, a positive finding on this test? Hearing none, we'll go on to test four, how desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw. Uh, so the purpose and intent of the zoning bylaw is laid out in uh, chapter one, um, is, a, is a long list of, uh, of various things, but it includes such things as preservation of open space, um, access to light and air, um, creation of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, accumulation of financial interest in the town, uh, among other things. And I think that um, providing this would not affect any of those um, in any substantial fashion. Are there any comments from the board? Are there any members of the board who feel they would not be able to make a finding a positive finding on this test. Okay. Well, with that, um, should the board vote to approve this variance, uh, there are three standard conditions that the board would impose upon the decision. Uh, the first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the variance shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from the approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Number two is the building inspector is hereby notified they are to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of Chapter 40, Section 21D of the Massachusetts General Laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action, also in accordance with Section 3.1. And standard condition number three is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this variance grant. Um, are there any additional conditions that members of the of the board feel would be appropriate for this request. Seeing none. Um, Mr. Hanlon, do you think it's good practice to hold a separate vote on each of the tests or do you think we can do a single vote. I think, in light of what we've already done, you, we could we could do a single vote because you have asked us each 
to whether we could make that finding and nobody has dissented. So presumably if we approve the whole thing, uh, all of the things we've already said will be sort of incorporated into that. Mr. DuPont, does that make sense to you? I think so. We've made the findings with regard to the variance. So I think that that's set. Great. So with that, then I would accept a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the application for a variance be accepted uh, um, to, to be, excuse me, I move that the uh, application for a variance be approved uh, subject to the three standard conditions that the chair has read into the record. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So what the board has before it, this is a vote to approve the variance application for 529 Summer Street with the three conditions that were previously read into the record. Um, the roll call vote of the full members of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So the... Variance is approved for 529 Summer Street. Thank you all for <clears throat> coming before us tonight. Um, as we sort of stated quickly at the start, um, <clears throat> at our next hearing, we will have a final vote on the written decision, which will then be um, available for you to uh, submit to the uh, Registry of Deeds in order to make the, the, the final variance uh, uh, legal and uh, and approved. So uh, if you just follow up with the building department, um, they will walk you through everything. Thank you. Thank so much. you. Okay. Well, Thank you, everyone. Good night. So this brings us up to item number six on our docket tonight, which is 379330 Mayflower Road. Um, I have a conflict with this um, application and therefore I will not be participating, but I will hand off the reins to um, Mr. Hanlon to carry on from here. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Now I get to be Mr. Chair for a, a little while. Um, if if we can extend this to for another forty minutes, we'll make it as long as town meeting, which would, which we don't usually do, but that shouldn't be a goal. So the case before us is docket thirty seven ninety three uh, uh, thirty Mayflower, uh, and I see Ms. Smith is here, uh, and uh, I wondered if you would you want to start off, and we'll take it from there. So what are you trying sure. to do? Sure, I am trying to put an addition on my home. Um, I've lived at 30 Mayflower Road since about 2009. Um, when I originally bought the house, it was just for me and my small dash hound. Um, but recently I adopted two little girls and um, there is a need for just a little more space than what we're currently living in today. Um, so I am hoping to have an approval to um, build an addition onto the house. The, the so the addition is how large um mr chairman i'm happy um my name is brian fossil i'm the architect for shannon yep. and if you want um, i was expecting that handoff to come pretty come pretty <laughs> soon i wanted to give her a, a otherwise it's sort of like the the quarterback sc scrambling for 60 yards for a touchdown <laughs> exactly <laughs> but she can throw the pass now and you can catch it <laughs> it's um, all yours take it away <laughs> okay thanks shannon uh, is there any way you can share my screen so I could walk you guys uh, through the drawings? Ms. Ralston, are you still here? Can you give sharing rights? You are all set. Okay. Mr. Mr. Poisson, you're fine. Okay. Should I'm be able to do working it. Working on it. Come on. Share. All right. Can you guys see it all okay? All right, there we go. Yes. So you can see the, the drawing set? 
Yes. Okay. You can. Perfect. Um, so essentially, we're seeking a special permit um, because we have a large addition uh, that we're proposing in front of you. Um, essentially, we are increasing the square footage by about 990 square feet outside um, the existing footprint. So if you're looking at my screen, this is the existing plot plan. Um, so it's existing Cape right now. Um, we do have two front yards because we're on Mayflower and then we also back up to Frontage Road. Um, so looking at the proposed, we are existing non-conforming, um, but we are maintaining all of the existing current setbacks um, other than essentially we are just sort of filling in this area on the backside of the house. Um, and then we are maintaining our usable open space here in the front yard setback. Um, so if I go through the drawing set here, so essentially this is the existing foundation. It's a full basement in this area. There's existing slab on grade in this section. And then this is the area we're proposing um, the new addition. And then as we run sort of through the first floor, it's a major renovation. So we're going to be repartitioning the interior, creating a significantly more livable space on the first floor. Um, it's a cape right now. So everything is sort of underneath the roof eaves. We're going to be building a full second story um, and then adding on in this area, which I'll show you in the proposed, the entire roof is coming off. Um, so this is the proposed uh, foundation plan. So the dark gray areas, the existing houses is now, we're coming, reusing this slab on grade and then creating a new full basement uh, where the new addition is coming out with a egress stair and then putting, adding a new rear deck. Um, so that is the first floor plan, which is all common living area. Um, and then the deck here, the bulkhead there. Once again, we have not changed the side setback on this side, on this side, or on the front. Um, we're just really just sort of infilling that piece here at the rear setback. Um, the building itself is not going any further back into the rear or the, the rear front yard setback on that side. Um, this is the full second floor. Uh, recruiting two bedrooms for the girls, uh, master suite, and a little study area. That is the seven foot line in the usable attic. And then we'll show you the elevations. Oh, I'm sorry, the roof plan. And then this is the front elevation. So that's the existing front elevation now uh, of the existing Cape. Once again, we're still you know maintaining that same sort of frontage. Um, coming in with this two-story colonial look. Um, that is the right side elevation, which is not encroaching any further to the adjacent neighbor. That's the rear elevation. So essentially we're taking where this little gable end was, uh, that's the same line of the existing proposed rear of the house. We're just pulling it all the way across um, and then capturing that space that's there. Um, and then that is the left side elevation. Um, so that's the drawing set. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we're adding 990 square feet. Um, we are proposing to stay within all of the existing setbacks. Um, we are providing the re required usable open space. And uh, we believe the new design is in keeping with the neighborhood in both character and in setback. Um, I know, let me go to the plot plan for a second, because this will come up, I'm sure. Um, there is a large existing tree uh, sort of sitting right where my little hand and my cursor is. Um, it is our intention to leave it as is and not disturb it. Um, we are going to either access the site on the right-hand side or from the rear to make sure we maintain that, that tree. Um, we have not filed with the tree permit um, application, but that'll go part of the, uh, when we file the full building application. So I'm happy to answer any questions. So are there any questions from the board?
Okay, well, seeing seeing none, this I have a I have one question. There's the plot plan shows that you're at twenty nine point nine. Excuse me, twenty five point nine feet um, is with respect to your usable open space, uh, and uh, so we there, are twenty four point nine 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 nine. Uh, so we have spoken with the uh, special services, um, and it's his determination that it meets the requirement. Okay. And now, I, my understanding of this is that measurement is never all that exact. And Correct. Th in effect, it's probably true that if you measured this 20 times, you would get some maybe a little further away and some posing no questions at all. And that's it's his judgment really as to what that what that means exactly um and, okay so i think that that i mean that makes the difference with with whether you comply with that usable open space or not okay seeing no other comments from the board if there still are none uh, then this is a public hearing uh the chair the real chair uh, read out lots of rules for how to participate in a public hearing uh, and I assume that we'll all follow those rules. So um, <laughs> the public hearing is now open. And uh, I wonder if there is anybody here who wishes to address this application. Going once, going twice. Mr. Chairman. I don't we know. Did... It's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we did have two letters of uh, support yes. submitted by Butters. And uh, those are part of the application package that was submitted that's right uh and i i would have mentioned those in any event okay. but now you've done it uh <laughs> two I've of the it. neighbors and and both of them in similar language have endorsed this application and say it will be a great a great addition to the neighborhood okay so if there's if there's no one who wishes to address the application <clears throat> this is a uh uh, we'll we'll close the public we'll, we'll close the public comment period. Uh, what we have before us is basically a straightforward application for a major uh, for a large addition. Uh, mm -hmm. The standards that we have to apply are the standards that uh, are ordinary for uh, large additions. Uh, the special permit uh, the, or the special requirement under five point four point two p six is that the alteration uh, or addition is in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity uh, considering this dimensions of setbacks in relationship to abutting structures and uses and considering the conformity with the purposes uh, of the bylaw <clears throat> um, and he that often is involves uh, a careful examination of the precise situa situation of a proposed project uh, to near abutters uh, because of the possibility that significant changes could adversely affect their interests in a way that wouldn't be true if you were dealing with virgin territory. Uh, but on the basis of the record before us, it seems to me at least, it, and everybody is perfectly privileged to disagree, uh, that this is in harmony with the, with the neighborhood. Uh, to be sure, uh, what it is right now is in harmony with the neighborhood as well. But if you go down the street, uh, as we I'm sure we all have, you notice that there's kind of a mix between capes and colonials, and this is kind of going from team A to team B, and and really the neighborhood represents a, a fairly harmonious uh, consolidation of the of the two housing types. So that would brings us to the required findings under uh, under the uh, under section three point three point three of our bylaw. <laughs> Um, the first is the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. The beneficial impact is allowing somebody, a citizen of Arlington, to improve the property, increase the tax base, and make the property more suitable for living in the way that most of us in Arlington do. Um, the requested use is authorized by special permit, required by special permit under 5.4.2B6. Um, 
it is essential and desirable to the public convenience or welfare for pretty much the similar reasons to the reasons why the adverse effects won't outweigh its beneficial impacts. Uh, it's good for the town and it's good for the owners of the property and it doesn't seem to be harmful to anyone else or to public policy. Um, there's really there's there's not going to be an expansion of uh, traffic congestion or any major change in the access to the site that would raise a question as to public policy. Um, it is not going to overload any public system because it's too small to be, pose a danger of doing that. Um, the only special regulations that are appropriate here are the regulations we started with for large additions, which I've suggested it probably met. Um, we, the use would not impair the character or integrity of the district, or at least the board could so find, uh, in part because it is just fitting right into the a direction in which the development of the district is going. Um, the, it is certainly not going to be detrimental to the public health or welfare, mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it's not changing the use. So it's not really that the final criterion is really not applicable here relating to the uh, undesirable ex expansion of uses. Uh, here, the use is exactly what the zoning ordinance asks for, what it already is, and uh, no nothing really has changed. So that's at least one way to look at it. Um, I, it's the way I would see it. Um, but I encourage everybody now to, to weigh in, and if they either disagree or have more reasons that this is your time. Well, let's begin deliberation of the project. Mr. Chair. Mr. Riccardelli. Uh, I, I agree with everything you said. You know, I think for these large addition um, special permits, sometimes we get hung up on the uh, harmony with the, the neighboring structures. I think uh, this, this project does it well, and I think it's uh, very appropriate for the neighborhood and, you know, Apes are uh, a tough four point to work with, so maybe some of your neighbors will be doing the same thing down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Riccardelli. Does anybody else have a comment on this application? Okay, we when in thinking about conditions, uh, the standard conditions would presumably apply. Um, I'd like to propose a condition that we sometimes uh, have here, which uh, the applicant is to provide a certified site plan indicating and dimensioning the areas of the existing and proposed site that comply with the requirements for usable open space as indicated in Section 2 of the Zoning Bylaw of the Town of Arlington to the Inspectional Services Department for review and approval. This is really basically a matter of, of you know, writing down what we already discussed. It was, yeah. It is the view of Inspectional Services that uh, this is... That, that the measurements that have been taken have been enough and that it does establish that the usable open space is the appropriate size. Um, I don't think that we can make that finding based on a record that just says it's 2.9. Um, and the, but Mr. Champa has already signaled where he's willing to go. Uh, and it's just important, I think, to uh, formally tee this up and, and have him make a formal determination at the building permit stage. And so that's what the purpose of that condition is. That'd be fine. All right. At this point, if there's no further discussion, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. Uh, I would like to move that the uh, application be approved subject to the three standard conditions as well as the additional condition you just cited with regard to submission of the certified site plan regarding usable open space and uh yeah so that's is there a second second <clears throat> yeah that i'm sorry i didn't catch who seconded uh, that was oh, mr riccardelli thank yeah. you <laughs> all right the motion has been made and carried and Bear with me for just a second. All right, so let's call the roll. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Uh, Mr. Holy. No, Aye. Right. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. So is 
you gotta have to help me here. Is we've got four, and I'm not quite sure. Is it Mr. LeBlanc who is participating in this hearing, or Mr. or Ms. Hoffman? I'm happy to vote. Okay, you can vote. <laughs> I'll, vo I'll vote too. So uh, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Great, thank uh, you guys. And thank you, Mr. Poisson. And uh, good, luck. Uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Good night. Good night. With that, we can move to the next item of agenda, which is the election of officers. And I'm sure that that Mr. Klein will be available to retake the chairmanship um, both, uh, both right now and, and my hope is for the year to come. Welcome back. No, Thank you. Chair. Re have to rename myself. <laughs> there we go. Great. Well, thank you all. Um, so we're now returning to uh, item two on our agenda, the election of officers. Uh, this is something the board does at its second meeting of April every year. Um, as the board is, is constituted, we have two elected positions. One is the position of chair. One is the position of vice chair. Uh, the board also has a position of clerk. Um, which Ms. Ralston uh, serves as um, as our zoning assistant. Um, I had mentioned to the board um, previously that we my intent with the with the board is not to uh, reign supreme uh, for all eternity, but that um, I think it's it's good to have some turnover in the in the leadership. Um, I, in, in talking with with Mr. Dupont the other day, just realizing how long I've actually been on the board, uh, <laughs> it's, it's quite a substantial amount of time. Uh, it's been my great pleasure to serve as chair of this board, um, and I uh, I would not leave the the board rudder list. But if there are others who are interested in 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 moving up and taking uh, on the role of chair, I would uh, uh, certainly uh, step aside and allow that to go forward. So with that, I would ask if there are any nominations for chair. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. I would nominate uh, Christian Klein <laughs> for the position of chair. Are there, thank you very much for that. Are there any additional nominations? Can we nominate you again, Mr. Chair? <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, he might split the vote. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have a single nomination for the position of chair. Uh, uh, do a vote of the board for uh, election of uh, myself, Mr. Klein, as the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, so roll call vote, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Uh, Ms. Hoffman? Aye. And Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. Thank you all very much. I appreciate your, your confidence in my abilities here as chair. Um, with that, I would open nominations for the position of vice chair. Mr. Chairman? Mr. DuPont? I would nominate Mr. Hanlon to serve as vice chair if he is willing to accept. Thank you, Mr. Dupont. Mr. Hanlon, do you accept? I would. Are there any other members of the board who have nominations for this position? Seeing none, uh, we have uh, election for the position of vice chair. Uh, so those in favor of Mr. Hanlon will do a roll call vote. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Uh, Mr. Holly? Uh, aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Yes, aye. Aye. Uh, Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. Uh, chair votes aye, Mr. Hanlon? Thank you. I'll vote aye. 
All right. So we have an, a new slate of officers who look remarkably similar to the current slate of officers, which is great. Um, Mr. Chair. Mr. Moore. Can I make a brief comment? Certainly. I uh, just want to say that um, I continue to be impressed by the leadership of this board and the way uh, you in particular conduct the meetings with sort of a, a latitude and uh, a calmness and a, a, you know, a good amount of decorum. And sometimes that's difficult depending on the various customers and clients <laughs> and issues which come up and the complexity. Um, you handle it very, uh, very ably. And uh, I just want to say as an outsider who spends a lot of time with you, um, I, I appreciate it. And Mr. Hanlon, that goes for you too, but you're only the vice chair, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for that, Mr. Moore. It's very kind of you. You're welcome. Um, and I, I would like to to take this opportunity to thank um, Ms. Ralston, he does for this board. Um, there has been a remarkable turn. We have been working very hard to sort of professionalize the the way that this board operates. Um, and Colleen has been absolutely essential to that task and uh, really appreciate all her efforts and everything she brings to the board. So thank you. Thank you, Colleen, for, for all you do for us. Here, here. Second that as well. Thank you. With next on our usual meeting is our upcoming meetings and milestones. So as we discussed earlier, May our next meeting is May 14th. We have five hearings uh, scheduled for that night. Uh, so uh, get your coffee rolling early for that one. Um, and then Tuesday, May 28th, um, I believe now we have three continuances that are coming up on that evening. Um, so that again will be another another big night. Um, and with that, um, just an update on town meeting uh, from members of the board. So the zoning articles haven't started yet, so there really is no update. Um, but I anticipate those will probably start either as an outside chance they'll start on Wednesday, but it'll probably be next Monday. We'll be discussing issues of zoning. And so if you're curious, uh, to see, you can either watch it on ACMI.tv or you can come down to town hall and sit in the sides upstairs. Um, and as members of a town committee, I think you can actually legally sit on the floor if you want. Um, I, I was listening very carefully to the directions that were being given by the by the chair of the select board. And I think he didn't say members of committee boards and committees were allowed within the enclosure. So um, that might be a possibility as well. But with that, um, we have no other business this evening, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Holly? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Night, Enjoy the rest everyone. of your evening. Good Good evening. Good and we'll see you in a couple weeks. See you in a couple weeks. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.